Cindy from Studio Lou. I thought I would just do a bit of a random crafting video tonight. Um, I've been on this like using things up kind of mode and I've been doing like a lot of ephemera in the background but today what I worked on um, was a bit of the folk art journal. So I got a lot done actually. So I've got the book put together. Um, I've got the the spine built and put in. Um, we have five signatures happening and I've got this here. I added all the signatures in. I, um, I added the lace on the edges. I've got pockets inside. Um, I've got all the signatures in. I have no decorating done yet, but the signatures are in and I like what's happening with them. Um, this is going to be a super fun book and I'm pretty excited to work on it. The ephemera is going to be a lot of fun. And um, yeah, so that's where this is going. I'm pretty happy about it. I like the um, the way that it bound. I'm happy with uh, everything that's going on so far. So I'm working on that. Um, but I'm going to just, I'll share with you, I did a little tiny thrift haul tonight. I'll share the books on my Friday book haul because I want to um, stick with that a little bit for now uh, to just kind of take part with Nat Williams and whomever else is taking part in the Friday book haul. I think that's kind of fun. So I'll show you the things that I got that are not, um, are not books. So let me just grab my, <clears throat> my, wipes here. I just want to give these a little a little bit of cleaning and a little bit of love. These are what I got tonight. Um they're Japanese scissors and they're really cool and I want to see if they how well they work. If I can use them. Um I went to my just to my recycling center on my way to um <clears throat> this local area that we go to let the kiddos exercise go scooting and running around and playground and all that kind of stuff. Well, the playground was a little bit too um, populated for my liking, so we didn't spend much time there. Also, I, <laughs> this is my rant for the day. Can like preteen boys calm down in general? Is that possible? Like the you know, whoever the board in this world is that talks to preteen boys, can you just please tell them to calm down? Because they're going to break the zip line at the park and they're kind of driving me a little mental. Like, there's seriously a lot to deal with. <laughs> so that's my rant for today. It's preteen boys. Um, yeah, because they were just going absolutely crazy at the park and like, I felt like they were all going to get hurt on this, um this thing they were playing on. Oh, so much. So I am thinking I want to just test these scissors out on something that's not important here, just in case they don't work that well. So I need to trim this anyways. So yeah, they're stainless steel Japan and I love the shape of them. I just thought they were really cool. I don't know how old they are. They sort of feel like they're from like the seventies or something. I don't know. They have that design to them. It almost looks like this is a nutcracker too. So anyways, let's see how this goes. Okay, I like them. They're actually very sharp too. And they have like a nice, like this is serrated, but it doesn't serrate anything. And then like they've got a shorter, um, like a shorter little mouth, if that makes sense. So like when you cut things, it's kind of more controllable. It's not like the big long, you know, American scissors that have this mega long yeah anyways so I got those scissors and they work <clears throat> then I found all of these they were in this like old paper box that was falling apart so I just grabbed like an envelope because in the recycling our recycling store there's everything so let's see what I got it's like a bunch of pieces to make paper dolls so they look kind of like they're hand colored. Um, I think they're quite old and they're on the back of like newspaper. So there's like a little head and there's a little body. They're like handmade paper dolls. Look at that. And this is like so cool. This baby, oh my goodness. So cute. A little dress. Looks like a little sleeve. That's nothing. But yeah, it's like 
all sorts of different kinds of little old paper dolls. This poor guy, his head got bent. There we go, sir. And then this dress. Yeah, so it looks like this person was literally drawing and cutting out their own dolls. And they have a very old style. I mean, these are very old. I can tell. What does this say? Madge Llewellyn, 16. Juliana. And on the back of it, it's like some kind of a paper doll book. This one's on like, has a graphical drawing on the back of this outfit. Really cool. I just, I've been really into making like collages with paper dolls lately. And these are going to be a lot of fun because they're all like hand drawn. These poor guys keep getting bent. They kind of remind me of Monty Python. Like some of these are cut out on like newspaper. Oh, she's cool. Well, there's her arm behind her. Oh, look at him. What a fancy guy. <laughs> like they're so intricately made out of random papers. So neat. I love when I find weird scores like this, like something just so different. Because the only other kind of place that you would find something like this would be at an antique store and it would be like really expensive probably. But these are so delicate. I'm definitely going to use them up. I'm not going to let them hang around a long time and get damaged. Because they are just really precious. Maybe what I'll do is make ephemera with them. Wow, this one's cool. And I could even scan the collages that I make, maybe. Wow. That one's cute. It's a bodice. And it looks like a matching. I don't know. That's another upper body. That's a cute little outfit. She is so cute. This little dress. And another little baby. I'd like to know how old these are. These are really old. Hopefully I can find something on these newspapers. These little fragments of newspapers. Some of them are on. A lot of them have like names on the back. And then like some of them are cut out of like a Victorian book. But then some of them are just, you know, this is Mr. Brunt, 45. Um, and it's just on a book page. This one it has a name, but no kind of a date on the back. That's what I'm looking for is a date. Oh, look at her. This one's cut from newspaper. Edith Montgomery. Oops, your head got bent. There you go. I mean, like, for whatever reason, the paper is quite durable anyways. Like, it's very thin, but none of them are torn. So they've obviously been handled with a bit of love. Um, really old newspaper. This is Lori Llewellyn. This is like a braid. Like, down someone's back. Um... It's very funny. A lot of interesting styles too. Like that's really cool. 
There's a big one. Wow. Wilbur H. Murray Manufacturing, Cincinnati. A little coat. A little person for that little coat. I saw the other half of that. It's like a royal cape or something. It's in there. Let's see, do we have any dates on here? No. New York, June 29th, but no year. June 30th, Chicago. Grain and provisions. Yeah, these are old. I'd love to know a little more about them. Lucia. What an interesting collection of dolls. Oh, hold on. January 26th, comma, <sighs> no year. <laughs> That's funny. little hats. What a fun little collection. Um, 12 cents. All for 12 cents. Paid $1. 165 Tremont Street. No date. <laughs> These are the last little bits. Yeah, no dates, but like what a fun collection, right? So that was a lucky score. I'm happy about those. Um, maybe I'll do some ephemera with them. Maybe even tonight I'll, I'll use a few of them. Who knows? I am definitely feeling like using up some fabric. Um, I want to make like some fabric tags. Um because I just have a lot of stuff, like a lot of fabric that needs to get used up. I've been working sort of slowly on my Ann Brooks tag. It's here. I, I don't feel like working on it tonight. It's bullion, bullion stitch. <laughs> and I don't love bullion stitch. I have to be like in the mood to do bullion stitch and I'm just not right now. I watched um, Rachel from Roxy's Creations make her tag today. Beautiful tag. I'm like, what is wrong with me? Okay. So let's make tags. That's what I feel like making. Um, just simple kind of like fabric and collage kind of fun tags with like maybe some wildlife or something. I'm going to just kind of go between my fabric and my basket of paper that I have over here and kind of go back and forth and just decorate things and make things. So where is my glue book right here I'm almost through another glue book amazing enough um where's my glue stick right here okay so first I will glue two pages together as I usually do yeah I had another busy day at work today we're doing this very annoying time consuming activity that um has become a part of my job oops i did a really terrible tearing job with that let's just start again um move the fabric out of the way so it's not jamming up my space anyways yeah it was it's, it's just this like new task that i have to do at work now a process change that honestly i don't know who thought of it but they are not my favorite person it is not a very um it's not a very smart <laughs> way of doing things but, oops, so I need to just trim the bottom off anyways. Okay. And then um, I went out and did a little bit of shopping.
shopping, um, like groceries and what, whatnot. And then I just took the kiddos out to play. I like the back side of this more. I like the front side. Is that weird? That's okay. I've been making all sorts of weird ephemera. I actually should catch you up on my October dailies. Oh, this glue stick is at the end and I'm not going to deal with this right now. Uh, glue stick over here. Hold on. There it is. There we go. Back in the glue business. Yeah, I've been making a lot of weird ephemera because <laughs> I'm taking part in the October dailies, which I can catch you up on. I'm really like, I'm enjoying doing them, but it is like pretty uh, busy, like doing every day and having to respond to a challenge. Um, one of my good friends, um, she's a, well, she's kind of a multi-talented artist. She's, um... Not, definitely not for fabric. She is both a sculptor of these wonderful little creatures and she also is a, a painter. And she was talking about how she's like dying to take part in the Mab Graves Drawloween this year, but like she just can't, um, she doesn't do good with prompts. And I totally understand that. I think it's all got to be whatever can work for your mindset, you know? And it's okay. So she chose one day to just use a prompt and like go do something that she wanted to do and it turned out really nicely. So I think all in all it was a win that she's picking and choosing what she wants to do. It's a good thing. I probably should back this before I do this. That's okay. It's okay. I will just trim it again. What I'm going to do is just um, fold this up at the back a little because I don't want to lose my pinking at the bottom of this. So I'll just trim it off here at the bottom. That's good. And I will stitch around all of these after, but not right now. So I'll show you a few things. from the week. Um, so this is from the Pink Odd Bird um, October Daily. Um, if you don't know Pink Odd Bird, April, she is a YouTuber and she's super awesome and she makes really cool journals. And uh, this is her monthly prompts for October. And so this one is um, you're a chef and you have to make um, a dish for Frankenstein's monster. So I chose to use this graphic from, I have this really old like vampire and kind of like movie horror, horror movie kind of book. So this image came from that old book. And then this is a recipe from like a 19, like early 1900s Newfoundland cookbook. And it's a recipe for boiled tongue with blackberry sauce. And the recipe is one fresh beef tongue, whole cloves, one glass blackberry jam, one cup of raisins, and a juice of one lemon. And it made me think about this guy that I went to elementary school with. Um, and he brought cow tongue sandwiches every day for school. His father had a, like a dairy farm or a cow, like a beef farm, I don't know, a cow farm. It was slightly traumatizing, let me tell you, to see it. But yeah, 
And then this is from um, Mab Mab's Drawloween 2021. So this prompt was poisonous and I just chose to make a little tag on cabbage dyed paper with uh, some poisonous mushrooms. So these are um, death angels, I believe, or destroying angels rather, and um, Amanita muscarias, and they're both poisonous mushrooms. Then, oh, I have a little bit more to share. So I also got this this week. These are for decoupage, and it's like a bunch of birds. So in this pack, you get this this sheet of like all these birds and holly and stuff. Um, some of it's a little Christmassy, but I think I can probably make use of it. So that will go into my stash o things, ephemera things put it over there and then this was um anthropomorphic I believe yes anthropomorphic so this is part of Mab's Drawloween club and um this was a, like a bird head from a field guide and this is um a paper doll and some sequins and she's sitting on a mushroom so that one and this one was Labyrinth, um, also from Mab's Drawloween Club. And I used this paper that has like a labyrinth of these kind of funny trees. And this is actually from a illustrated Alice in Wonderland book. And then I put these kind of dark, moody, old movie characters at the bottom. Obviously not happy to be in uh, this labyrinth. And then these googly eyes. This is from um, Pink Odd Birds Challenge. And it was to use a bunch of um, spooky googly eyes. So I backed this tag with some like really old 1950s like math homework and these are all cutouts from a 1957 yearbook, um, a college yearbook, and this is the math club so that's scary to me all that math. And this one I was winged and so this is an image um, from oh it's a sprite and it's from the Spiderwick Chronicles um, it's the Potassus Floridus or the petal head sprite and it's on coffee dyed paper and it's just like a nice little piece of ephemera for a journal and this one was to, um, this was for um, Pink Cod Bird, and this was to depict uh, a poem based on trick-or-treating, trick-or-treaters. And so um, this is curious costumes donning a fright. Hungry ghouls take over the night. They will not leave you without a trick. Some of them really laid it on thick. Surely you never imagined this. The big empty candy dish just went amiss. And it made me think about how I used to have these neighbors that lived beside a church across the street from where I grew up and they were never home on Halloween but they would always leave this massive bowl of candy um, just unattended in the little like they had like the, one of those areas in their house where like you walk in and there's kind of like an indoor porch kind of thing like a little sunroom area and then behind that was the main door to the house they would always leave it out there and I always was like I'll take an extra one nobody will know but like I imagine a lot of kids would just dump the whole thing into their bag <laughs> I don't know anyways um and then this one um I'm trying to remember what the theme was oh I don't know if you follow me on Instagram um I've got them all listed day by day there so this one um I added some words on this Nosferatu I think it might be classic horror actually from Abstraw Halloween. It is, yeah. And it says, In twilight, traveler of his time, hid behind a tree, tiptoed into the garden, became curious, glistening white. She tiptoed there, beautiful as the roses. Nothing more exciting than the thrill. In the darkness, there was nothing. The song was over. <laughs> and then this one, um... It was to create, it was from Pink Odd Bird, and it was create a page of spooky Halloween masks. And so this was the first time that I decided I would cut out all these little faces from a yearbook, that same 1957 yearbook. And I just poked their eyes out like masks, which is, yeah, super creepy. Gave me some kind of crazy ex-girlfriend vibes, and I definitely felt really weird doing this. Like, someone's going to see me doing this and think I'm like a serial killer, so... <laughs> I definitely felt weird doing it. 
Um, and then there was this challenge and I'm trying to find. So this was actually to depict three goblins in the moonlight and it's from Pink Odd Bird. And I didn't have any goblins in my stash to do like a collage with. So I used sprites uh, from the Spiderwick Chronicles and did this moon in the background. Then later on, as I was playing around in my stash, I found that I did have three goblins, but one was on the other side of the page. And this is from like a vintage book about like myth and mystery. And there's two goblins. Um, and I did a coffee dyed page moon in the background and this is on my botanical printed paper. So I did actually make it a little later. So between these two, I think I, I got it done. Um, and that's all the ephemera that I've made this week that's from challenges. So that just kind of gets you caught up and I can put this stuff away. <laughs> My ephemera box is just teeming with weird ephemera and nature ephemera. <laughs> so for people who order from me, who knows what you'll get? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, I'm going to grab some birds from back here because I think I want to put a robin on here maybe. We have a robin and her baby. <clears throat> I'm just going to turn this here. Robin and baby Robin. So cute. Yeah, so we um, have been doing lots of mushroom hunting and walking and having a nice kind of couple weeks of fall. It's been beautiful today. The weather was gorgeous. I thought it was going to storm a bit because the sky was dark, but it didn't. I think we had like a thunderstorm morning. It hasn't stormed yet. I hope it does tonight so that tomorrow is um, just another good day. And we're already at Wednesday because of the holiday. So that's nice. It'll be the weekend before I know it. Um, and I'm looking forward to the weekend. I just want to have some downtime. I'm feeling kind of tired this week because... Um, my son has been waking up really early and then I have to go get him out of his bed and bring him into my bed and then both kids are in my bed and my husband has already gone to work and so they crowd me and that's just the life of the life of mom. <laughs> These are just um, some stamps that I made quite some time ago. Um, on like coffee dyed paper, no avocado dyed paper. Oops, I'll just stick that on there. And I feel like I need something, one more thing here. What, what, what? Let's see what I have over in my stash over here. Um, hmm. Maybe something from like an old encyclopedia would be cool. That would be cool. Strawberry pear. Let's rip that out. Maybe just try to trim it a little more around. Try to keep the definition underneath it if I can. This is really brittle paper. Well, that would be good. Okay. 
Yeah, I think that'd be nice. Once it's stitched around, that'll be perfect. Um, it's backed already, so I can clip the hole. I don't know if that'll work with... No, it's not going to work with fabric. Okay, no worries. I will... Actually, it sort of did. Let's see if we can just cut around it. There we go. Not as bad as I thought it would be. Um, and then I'll put some kind of um, lace in here. Maybe this one would be nice. I'll just take four little sections off and I'll string it through. When I stitch around it, it will be stitched on. As so. Yeah, okay. So there's one. One done. Um... I also today did the next sketch that I'm going to do for the imagination blanket, but I can't share it yet. I'm not there yet. <laughs> All right, let's make a piece of ephemera with this Queen Henrietta Maria from a picture by Van Dyke at Dean. This is from an old book. Um, we'll make some kind of a journal card or something here. I was thinking of just working on the folk art journal tonight, but I think I feel like making ephemera right now. <laughs> this weekend, I think I'm going to spin, oops, yarn outside. That's my plan. I want to spin some yarn. Oops, let's replace that corner if I can. And I think I will also do something else with the apples from my endless apple tree. Possibly make some strudel. Two, excuse me. All right, and then I've got this floral lace. thinking of putting like a bit of it here and maybe inking on top of it to just change the color a little. And then what color would I want that to be? Maybe yellow. Purple labels could look nice at the bottom with like some inking and some words, maybe. So many things like this that I need to cut out. I actually need to just have a day of like, well, not a day, but some time fussy cutting. I need to fussy cut mushrooms, I need to fussy cut lots of stuff. Yeah, and my ink is over here somewhere, oops, and my ink dauber. Okay, just tone 
tighten the purple down a little bit. And then I need some words. I could do something generic like chapter four. Um, a song of a bird. Burst into blossom. That's nice. Maybe a burst into blossom. Okay, I think that's done and I will stitch around it. Um, next, I might do another piece of fabric. Because I need to use up fabric. I'll just cut this seam off, maybe. Hmm. What to do with this? Let's see if I have something that would look good. Maybe glued down on it. Maybe these little people. These little cuties. here. Yeah. Then I need a piece of paper to glue this down on. i use this. You don't need to use any like major glue for this kind of work because it's going to get stitched. Also, for whatever reason, this glue stick that I use is really good at um, gluing paper and fabric together. It's just, it's phenomenal actually. to ink around this and I forgot um, let's see if I can still and I wanted to use my super difficult ink pad that's on its last legs because I want this color I think I have another one of these I should honestly go find it and stop being silly here <laughs> I'm just gonna get my hands mucky I'm sorry I just want to use this ink pad I might just actually glue it back on here. <laughs> I am a terrible mess. Okay, it's okay. I hope you guys don't come to this channel looking for beautiful nails, because that is not me. That's like Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah or something. She's like an, a goddess of nails. I am not that person. <laughs> okay. 
think it just comes from like the fact that I don't know I do pottery and I think pottery is like one of the hardest things on the hands so I don't even try to maintain fingernails because I do pottery and like no thank you and I just have never I've just never really been into nails not my thing I have nothing against it I think power to all of those beauties with those beautiful nails out there but I am not she I'm gonna trim this again. Alright. So then I will. There we go. Just trim the excess off here and then straighten it out. Because this fabric was not completely straight. And then I just gotta put a little more glue here on the second backing page. And then after I stitch it, I will trim again to get any excess paper off the back. But for now, I'm happy with that, just as it is. I could put like, I don't know, not the Song of a Bird. Um, I have a bunch of those, Song of a Bird, because a few green branches, a few green, that's cute, um, because I pulled apart a book and one of the um the chapters was named that there we go just a little bit of this light limey green there we go we go then three down okay what's next um hmm I've got this image of this and I've already made it into a tag but I think it just needs a little something else. I'm thinking of one of my already actually maybe we'll use one of the paper dolls. The new paper dolls. Let's do that. Let's see if we have something that would look good with that. Nobody too big. This little girl might be good. Hold on. What about her? Yeah, I think she stands out just enough. And what I'll do, um, I'll grab my yellow ink back here. Um, just clean off my dirty dauber here. Almost like a little bit of sunshine behind her to just have her stand out a little more right here. I think I'll have her just standing beside the branch. Okay. this with some walnut stain. And I need to back it with some paper.
to the side if I want to punch a hole in this or just leave it. I think I might just stitch around it and leave it. Almost doesn't really need a tag topper, but I'll grunge the back up nicely with this leftover walnut stain. Yeah, and then I will stitch around that with some brown thread, and I think that will be very nice. Okay, then fabric again. I'm just trying to kind of go back and forth between fabric and paper, because <laughs> then I'm using it up. So this is some of my eco-printed fabric. Um, let me just tear that bit off. So you can see the large leaves here. So this edge is better for a tag top. Okay. thinking about I'm always like I know it's been forever but I've been starting to think about doing like a collage camp or something like having a venue maybe with like limited you know available kind of seating and um, you know a nominal fee of some kind and like a day where people could just come out and like you bring your all your scraps like you bring like your scrap bin as well as anything that you want to use as a focal point in your collage work or making ephemera and like just have like a collage camp I was thinking that would just be a lot of fun like a retreat somewhere nice um, you know with maybe like a vaccine passport kind of thing like everybody's vaccinated and um, yeah, I gotta think about it. I'm hoping that in Canada we can get boosters soon. Also, I mean, I would honestly wait on a booster though if I could get a vaccine for at least my daughter. It's kind of my big hope by the end of this year is that my daughter can get a vaccine. I think I'm still gonna have to wait for my son for a bit because I think they're they're saying that the next group that they'll have like enough testing done will be um the four to twelve range. And he is only turning two, so he's got a little ways to wait. But that's okay. into a tag. And maybe I will do another paper doll on this one. use men like just men but I think I'll use him it's good to get out of your comfort zone
Mr. Brent. Maybe Mr. Brent is a botanist. And I gotta glue under here. But these dolls have like dimension to them. It's interesting, like they must have been switching out, like maybe giving him a bag or something like that. I feel like these were used maybe in some kind of a story or something. Then I'll see if I have some words or something that would be fitting there. Um, what is this one? I have lots of those generic like chapter 12, chapter 5. Moonlight is still on the water. Hawthorne Hedge. Um... When the wind blows, rivers and brooks, wind the clock, and the tree becomes older. Oh, I love, as the tree becomes older. I like that. I like that. Apple core squash seeds. More gentle. Hmm. And tomorrow, again tomorrow, wind the clock as the tree becomes older. so good to like keep all these kind of words but sometimes when I'm looking for things I don't quite find them but I kind of like just going through them I know that I could definitely organize them like into narratives but Drifted slowly through leaves. You know what? I need a he. I just need the word he. That's all I need. I will find that really quick in, um, maybe in this book, actually. My glue book. There's a he right there. He chattered. That could be kind of nice, too. There we go. Again tomorrow, wind the clock as the tree becomes older. He chattered. Now just he drifted. Hmm. You know what? I'm okay. I feel like I just need the word and. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit... <laughs> being a little bit uh, perfectionistic. I don't need to. Um... Hmm. There's no and on that page. And here we go. So, I was thinking next time I go thrift shopping for books, I might try to find a Gabriel Garcia Marquez book that's not already in my collection because, like, well, 
that is maybe because then I would actually use it because he's like the most wonderfully poetic person in his writing and he's got he just paints beautiful pictures with his words and I think if I could find a book written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez that was relatively large text I think it would be a treasure trove of words so if you've ever never re read his books I recommend him as an author if you like beautiful just beautiful um writing and also if you are a journaler and you would like to have a nice place to harvest really beautiful like word snippets I think his books would be amazing for this purpose. Okay. I can't believe we're already like cre creeping up on an hour. It's amazing how time consuming ephemera is. I, I've been seeing this uh, viral like TikTok, Instagram, like template for making stories. And it has this song and it's like, it costs this much because it takes me effing hours <laughs> because I don't have superpowers. Like it goes through this whole song. And I often think about that when I'm working this way and, and I'm like, yes, it does take hours to make very tiny pieces of work. So please know that if you ever buy one of my journals, especially the ones that are really like full of things that are a little higher priced. Um, although I am, I think very much underpricing my work right now because I'm still, um, you know, just finding my, my footing in this genre and I don't have a lot of like followers yet and that kind of thing. Not to say that, that will, you know, change the way I price. It won't necessarily, but, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very time consuming to make these kind of things for sure. And I, I see a lot of people underprice their work. Like, I don't think I'm super underpricing, but I do think a lot of people really do. A lot of the time it's because they enjoy the hobby that they do. And so they don't consider it work, but you know, you only have so much mileage on these hands and on this body and this time in your life. So make sure whatever you do, you make it worth it. There we go. I'm so happy with this guy. See, these paper dolls are magic and I never used men in my work. And I really love this. It's my favorite piece tonight that we've made. So I think they both are just really fun. I'm happy with these little creatures kiddos these little critters and she's lovely I think I like that one and these robins are sweet so I will stitch around all of these and they will go into my ephemera box um so yeah we have spent an hour together and I thank you so much for hanging out with me now it is time for me to stitch around these clean things up and then go do a little bit of homeschool stuff with my daughter um Maybe even make some cookies, which is actually part of our Morocco study that we're doing. We're going to make stained glass cookies. So thanks again, guys, and have a wonderful evening. We'll talk soon. Bye for now.